Hello, I recently made this zine uh, called Lair of the Frog God and it's an RPG zine for uh, pretty much any system, it's system neutral but I think the interesting thing is that all of the art instead of drawing it like I usually do I used photos and I photo bashed them together and I thought I'd share my process because it is quite simple some of them required more drawing than others I think this one was three photos together uh, frog, the man, and the cave. Yeah, I just thought it would be interesting to go through this and explain how I actually make these images. That one's quite gruesome actually. <laughs> it's pretty easy to learn, it doesn't require any special software beyond some basic image editing software. And I think let's jump right into it. So this is Clip Studio Paint, the program I'm going to be using, but a lot of the techniques that I'm going to be covering can also be applied to Photoshop or Krita or GIMP or Affinity Photo or whatever you use basically. Let's actually start by making a canvas. So we're gonna make an A4 canvas here. And the first thing you're gonna need is an idea. So that sounds pretty obvious, but it is quite crucial. So I was thinking about what to make for this video and in my zine, there are actually wrestler frogs. And I didn't have any images of them but I thought, you know, that sounds interesting. That sounds like something we might be able to do. Um, you know, why not? So yeah, that's the idea that we're going to go with. So you've got your idea, but you're going to need some photos to photo bash. The source that I like to use is Unsplash. So I'm just going to search for frog and I'm going to get a bunch of wonderful photos of frogs here. Um, if you see here, it says here Unsplash Plus. These are licensed under the Unsplash Plus license. It's a different license from the regular Unsplash license. The regular Unsplash license is all photos can be downloaded and used for free in commercial and non-commercial purposes and no permission is needed. Yeah, you can basically use these images for your photo bashing and you can use them for commercial products as well. So I like to use this website. So, um, yeah, what image are we going to use for these wrestler frogs? Um, yeah, I don't know. I think this this one speaks to me. Uh, usually you want to assemble a few images, but I think I'm going to go with this one. So I'm going to just open it in a new tab so that I remember that. Uh, we're also going to need some muscular arms. So I'm just going to search muscular arms and see what we get. Um, yeah, uh, muscles maybe? I don't think uh, muscular arms is giving us anything very good. So, muscles. So you want to see whether it actually fits the perspective. This one actually does, kind of. So I'm gonna open it in a new tab there. Um, I need one more for the back arm, so... Let's actually keep looking. Man, this is making me feel really bad about not exercising more right now. Yeah, I think this one might work. So we're gonna go with uh, those two. And it's not like you need to find all the images right now, right? You can always come back to it later after you put in the initial images and see whether it fits. So just for now, uh, let's copy the image of the frog into our canvas here. And now we're gonna have to talk about filters. There's a lot of ways about going about filters. Um, I'm just going to go over a simple one right now. First, you make a new layer, so I'm just going to make a new layer there. For Clip Studio Paint, if you go to Filter, Render, then Perlin Noise, you can actually generate Perlin Noise. And for A4, I like to go with a 3 on the scale and 1.5 on the amplitude and hit OK. Then what you want to do is you want to set this uh, layer mode. I know my face is blocking it, but you want to set it to Hard Mix. And that is going to result in this. Uh, what you then want to do is you want to make sure that your saturation for this image is at zero. So we're gonna actually go to layer, new correction layer, hue saturation luminosity, and set the saturation all the way to minus 100. There we go. So this is the base that we're gonna work off of. So I normally like to make a folder for all of this, and that's what I'm gonna do right now. Um, so I'm gonna put a hard mix and uh, saturation stuff in this folder and I'm gonna set the folders layer mode to true and that is going to result in this where I can turn it off and on but yeah that's not gonna really help us if 
we're gonna have the background there and everything so what you need to do now is you need to do some masking so create a layer mask and then just use your magic wand tool or whatever you might use a lasso tool or whatever and just start editing the image down a bit and just do a rough of the it doesn't need to be exact to be honest in fact some dots can remain here and there so yeah i think like that actually looks pretty good to me i'm just gonna erase some of the extras around here and remember that we're doing this on a layer mask so it's a non-destructive workflow and you want a strong silhouette most of the time so yeah i think this will suffice for now okay cool i think the frog is a bit too dark so i'm actually going to click on the image here not the mask uh the image and i'm going to go to edit tonal correction and level correction i made a hotkey for that but uh, i'm just showing you where it is in case you are new to clip studio paint and i'm just gonna make it a little bit lighter i think using the level correction something like that i think is good and this is the general level that we're going to strive for for our other images so we're gonna copy the first one in and we're gonna just do the same thing right we're just gonna mask that arm out so i think for this one i'm actually just going to use a lasso and i am going to just draw around the arm first just to get a general base uh maybe something like this and then i'm going to mask that out like that and then yeah i'm just gonna see how it looks first Eh, that looks pretty good already so uh yeah we just remove some of the darker parts there something like that okay i think i am reasonably happy with this like i said it doesn't need to be completely clean we're gonna increase the size of that i think and let's see how it looks oh yeah that looks good now you can't really make it out uh very easily in the in all the noise so let's actually first try to do the levels adjustment that i did previously so i'm just going to try to adjust it until it looks a bit better on the image itself i kind of like that we can erase some of that in there and some of that there we'll be doing some more editing over top of this so don't worry but first let's grab the other image which is this guy and we're gonna do the same thing okay we're gonna mask out the arm and we're gonna flip it horizontally and uh let's see if we can get this to work okay uh i am reasonably happy with this just gotta get it good enough that it will look right once the filter is over it so let's take a look and yeah so we're gonna actually just adjust the levels again the same process here this time we might need it a bit darker maybe maybe something like that and then we can make the entire thing larger as well this looks really stupid and i'm really enjoying it okay there you go so this is a good base to work off but it is not the end of the process there's still a bunch of things uh not that great about this image it's kind of hard to tell what's going on so we're actually going to edit it out a bit more okay so we're gonna have to want to make the silhouette a bit more visible so we're gonna actually try to make it a bit more distinctive so we're going to erase some parts of the base of it first like that and we're just gonna try to make the overall outline look a lot better i think this can be rotated a bit to make it like jut out to make it a lot more obvious something like that looks good and then maybe we could like uh, erase some extra parts here so that uh, the silhouette is even more obvious and i think that's a good start so what you want to do after this is you want to start making adjustments to everything so you'll go to layer new correction layer and level correction and that allows you to do level correction on all the layers below so we can adjust it i think i'm happy with something like that so again this does not look amalgamated at all the arm kind of looks stuck on which i to be honest with you i kind of like it kind of looks kind of stupid which i'm a fan of but i think i do want them to be a bit more connected so i'm gonna create a new layer and on top i am actually going to draw some stuff so i'm literally going to use white and black and start drawing uh i'm just using you know what let's just use the classic um 
CSP brushes. So I'm going to be using the felt pen. I think I've never really used this before, but it should work the same way. So I'm just going to draw over top. And as you can see, a lot of the hard work is kind of done for us already. You generally want to kind of like connect up segments. And then what I like to do is I like to use a blending brush. Um, I believe this one is not a CSP default one. Let's see if I can find a CSP default one. Yeah, these are stuff that comes with the program itself. So we're going to use the textured blender here. And we're just going to start smudging uh, our painting. So what you want to try to do, if possible, is to try to have some separation between the elements. But also you want to highlight different areas. Like for example, I want people to be able to look at it and say, oh, that's a frog. So I will highlight the eyes here which is one of the most distinctive features of any creature, actually. And I'm just going to add highlights there. It can be as subtle or as uh, flashy as you want. And then afterwards, you can just start smudging it out to make it look a lot more natural. So I'm going to do the same over here as well. I'm just going to emphasize certain things. Um, I also think like some muscles on the back will be nice. So I'm actually just going to add some dark there. And then I'm just going to add some white. And that looks kind of crappy, but once you start smudging it, it's like, wow, it looks it looks pretty amalgamated with the image. And that's kind of the magic of having these kind of filters on top. It kind of like does all the heavy lifting for you. At this point, uh, you might also be thinking to yourself like, what else do I want to add in to this image, right? Uh, maybe you want it even more muscular. Uh, maybe you want it ridiculous. Maybe you're like me, and you're thinking of giving him something that really shows that they're a wrestler. So, I'm not sure if this is gonna work, but I'm thinking of doing something quite silly. Um, you know those like, uh, wrestler kind of, I don't know what you call them, um, these shirts that they put on wrestlers. Uh, I'm gonna draw one over top. Actually, I'm gonna need some reference for that. <laughs> uh, wrestler. Let's see. Um, yeah, I'm looking for something like that. Okay. Cool. So, I'm gonna do something like this. We're just gonna try to emulate that image that we just saw. So, actually, this part is very much just drawing. Um, so, the better you are at drawing, uh, the better this part is gonna turn out. But if you aren't that great at drawing, you can always make up for it by having better editing on the images to begin with. So, I think I'm gonna smudge this part out like so. And I think I'm gonna give him a bit of a rib cage, which I'm not sure if that makes sense anatomically for a frog, but we're going with it. We're, we're going with it. Uh, I guess we're also gonna give him uh, rippling chest muscles because because this is just getting ridiculous. So, so yeah, this is what we got at the moment. Uh, I think the only last change I will make is... Um, yeah, you know why not? I'll just make it even more muscular and even more ridiculous because that seems to be the direction that we're going towards. So again, just drawing and then smudging it out. And we're just gonna add on more rippling muscles. Very nice. Uh, here as well. And here. And a bit more tension towards the eyes. You can really spend forever on this stuff, but I'm gonna call that done for now. So moving on to the next stage, we're going to do some coloring on this wrestler frog. So there's a few ways to do the coloring. One thing I like to do is I like to make a new layer and put it at the very top of everything. Um, and an easy way to add color to it is to just color the ink. So I'm going to fill this entire layer by pressing Alt Backspace uh, with green. And then I'm going to set this to, I believe, Lighten. There we go. And you already have something that looks pretty good. Um, so that's optional. You can uh, adjust the opacity as you wish. Uh, another way to do it is you can also use a multiply layer. So what I tend to do is I tend to use a magic wand. Uh, I select everything on the outside. Uh, and then what I do is I will press Control shift i to invert it. And then I will fill it with the color of my choice. So like that. And then we can set this to multiply. And it won't grab everything perfectly usually anyway. So usually you need to go back in and start actually drawing in the missing areas here and there. 
so let me just do that real quick what i find tends to also help is having a two color scheme so in my zine i used a yellowish kind of like color to offset some things here and there and you can do that to draw attention to certain areas this is on the same multiply layer i'm just using a different color um if you want to be entirely non-destructive you can also use a folder that is set to multiply and have several normal layers in it that is what i would maybe do if i were doing a more complex illustration with more colors but for me this is fine it looks pretty good to me um one last thing you can do for color is you can go to layer new correction layer and gradient map so then you can set it to whatever gradient you want i believe that these come with uh clip studio paint uh, let's try this one so you can set the layer to normal or overlay and you can just adjust it and see what kind of color you like in this case i think this looks pretty good so i'm gonna stick with this so i hope that was helpful that was most of my workflow actually for my personal workflow i do have a few extra things like i have hotkeys that can actually turn off specific folders and filters I have paper textures that I apply on top of the images. I sometimes create custom noise textures. So if you want me to go into any detail about any of those things, um, feel free to tell me in the comments below. But in the meantime, we've gone from basically this, whatever this is, to this, which I think is pretty good. And as you can see, this is pretty easy to do. So I just wanted to share the information that I had to help you make your zines much easier. So yeah, you don't need a whole lot of art skills in order to make something that looks pretty good and custom for your own zine. So if you like the content, hit like, subscribe, and again, comment if you want to see any more information about the other parts of my technique. But this should be good enough for some really cool illustrations. I will leave a link to the Clip Studio Paint file below. I'll upload it on my Dropbox or something. And hopefully you can learn from it. And hopefully it's of use. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.